Hello, welcome to Algorithms. My name is Saurabh. Today we are going to discuss about uh, zero trust assessment. As you remember from my previous uh, discussions, I mentioned about having a threat uh, modeling approach and asking right questions uh, within your organization so that you have a proper threat model and based on that uh, you, you, you put together your processes and tools in order to address those okay now before i jump into uh, the uh, categories and questions uh, for the risk assessment i would like to share one thing with you guys that in the past uh, the focus of security team was more from the bottom of visibility standpoint like uh, to have data about devices, servers, networks, operating systems, and workspaces. But now since uh, cloud has come into the picture, top-down visibility has become very important uh, from uh, from zero trust perspective or from the cybersecurity perspective. So uh, things like entities, information processes, transactions, and applications uh, are very important. So now we need an approach where you have bottom-up visibility as well as top-down visibility. So it is more of an augmentation from, you can say, top-down to bottom-up or bottom-up to top-down, okay? So we need both the approaches in order to make sure that uh, we have a very strong uh, uh, framework in place. Now let's get back to uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the risk assessment. Now, <coughs> Here I have divided the security disciplines, uh, attack protection, identity and access management, data, application security, and so on and so forth. And for each security discipline, there are a set of questions in the proactive discovery space as well as the re uh, reactive discovery space. Now, those who are interested to uh, uh, receive the spreadsheet, uh, which contains all the questions, please drop a comment and uh, with your email id i'll send it to you uh, other than that you can just take a note of these questions and uh, you can use it okay so attack protection couple of things that you have to keep in your mind is that where and how will attackers target how real is the target how should i adjust my security posture to reduce my exposure to the threat uh, what can i do proactively to improve my surface area for attack? How can I risk prioritize my vulnerability remediation effort? Where does it make sense to proactively test my controls? For example, uh, continuous penetration testing, uh, breach and uh, attack simulation. I hope uh, you are getting my point. Now in the reactive discovery space for the attack protection, uh, where am I breached? Uh, are these attacks real and what incidents represent the most risk okay for identity and access management uh, in terms of proactive risk discovery where and how will users need access for example to new uh, SaaS applications uh, uh, business unit applications and so on and so forth how common is this access how much risk does this represent how can I reduce the risk using controls uh, such as uh, privileged access management, uh, multi-factor authentication. Then how critical and sensitive are these resources? How can I provide just in time, just enough access to a given resource? How much assurance do I need that a user is who they claim to be before providing access? So these are, these, these are very important questions if you are designing uh, your zero trust architecture and threat modeling approach. Now from the reactive perspective, uh, where do users access uh, uh, patterns represent a uh, uh, lot of risk uh, that I need to respond? And how confident is your organization uh, that uh, the incident is not false positive and how valuable is this user uh, what is the current threat level is there a pattern of suspicious activity across multiple users or domains where is user access overly permissive so those are the areas that you need to look at from the data perspective very sensitive data created in my enterprise very sensitive data created in its stored outside of my enterprise what is considered valuable and why i think this is a very important question from the data perspective because data is being shared 
is being analyzed by different people at different level in the organization so when it comes to defining the valuability of data you have to have the right definition and this you and IT cannot define it, uh, security cannot define it, you have to work with the business owners who own that data and then you need to map it with how, uh, how, how, how compromise uh, with the data uh, will have an impact on revenue on top line and bottom line of the organization. Okay. Now how is sensitive valuable data being protected? Is the risk managed? Now for the reactive risk discovery where is sensitive data being mishandled? How sensitive, valuable is that data? Does this represent enough risk that I need to respond? The reason I am giving you both the uh, approaches is that uh, when you ask question uh, or if you have a set of questions, assessment questions within your organization, you can map it with what I am explaining here and then figure out whether the questions that you have asked or are part of your assessment are basically reactive or proactive. So that is going to help you in terms of overall approach or a strategy that what sort of approach because if the, if the underlying foundation or the assessment is more towards reactive approach then the strategy that you deploy on top of it and then what tools and processes you deploy will be more reactive rather than proactive. So that's very important. You have to have this understanding of where I'm going reactive and where I'm going proactive. From the business continuity perspective, uh, what areas, processes of the business represent the most impact to revenue if the service is lost? Which systems support these? I guess most of the organizations have a list of these systems, uh, but yes, a clear cut definition is very important because if you go to a business unit, uh, they are going to say, yeah, my system is uh, very important, my data is very important, but you need to have that uh, situation awareness uh, 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 in terms of organization that okay uh, this data is important or this application is important in this context but here we are talking about revenue the impact to revenue so that's the key word here uh, from the business continuity and management perspective now from the rea reactive perspective so in the event of suspected failure for instance is the failure confirmed uh, what business process and revenue are at immediate risk what system processes must be restored first okay from the application security perspective uh, what are the vulnerabilities in the new code or services uh, now the moment you ask a question in the reactive category uh, so it becomes like where are the vulnerabilities in running applications right now I go back to the proactivity. I just wanted to give you the difference means here the focus is vulnerabilities in the new code and services and in the reactive approach the vulnerabilities in in existing applications. Okay. Now where are licensing risk if open source software is being used nowadays almost every other organization is using uh, open source software. And one of the challenges uh, which are pretty much found almost every other organization is the code dependency. So a lot of organizations are now using DevOps uh, and, uh, and uh, they are using open source softwares as well. Now in terms of code dependency or package dependency, sometimes we just look at uh, uh, the area of uh, uh, core application or the application that we are interested in but we don't scan enough the package dependent package which are coming from third party and there have been cases in the past where those uh, dependencies have been exploited to enter in the uh, uh, business assets or business systems and uh, data was compromised so this is very important point uh, using simple threat modeling for new services, data and applications, what are the ways this business capability can be attacked? Okay, so in the previous, uh, uh, like in the, in the identity and access management, in the business continuity, we discussed about the uh, application, uh, we discussed about the business and its impact on the revenue. Now we are talking about uh, the 
uh, the, the the business capability so for instance if you have uh, uh, in your enterprise architecture if you have business capability and applications are mapped to business capabilities uh, along with the services process data and application then you need to figure out you need to map your threat modeling approach to to that uh, uh, mapping uh, in order to figure out uh, uh, where is the maximum impact so uh, so so you get to know that uh, what is the impact on that business capability if attack happens and then how are you going to uh, uh, how prevent the compromise okay what is my confidence that the risk is real how important is this business capability is the risk great enough that it needs to be addressed now when you are assessing the risk uh, the reason i am uh, i'm i'm talking about the business capability because not all business capabilities are core capabilities there are uh, enablers there are support functions so you need to have a clear understanding what are your core capabilities how you are uh, defining the security parameter of those core capabilities because nowadays what happens uh, the assessment is done just at the application level and uh, uh, once the uh, uh, like privilege access management and those things are defined like from the tool perspective uh, organizations feel that they are secure uh, but that's not the case I think uh, this assessment has to map with your business capability so that there is a clear cut understanding of if there is a compromise so you get a map it's a very simple you get a map and you get to know okay what are it's more of a like what are what are the weak areas what are the strength areas and then wherever you see a weakness or deficiency in your system from the security standpoint you implement or inject the right vaccinations in order to make sure that uh, immunity is uh, good enough uh, to protect your data application and business okay from the reactive uh, discovery perspective are there real attackers on these applications is the risk great enough that i need to take action if the system cannot be patched what mitigating controls might be used for example uh, web application firewalls and uh, intrusion prevention systems or virtual patching from the procurement side uh, what risk does this potential vendor product service represent uh, does the vendor use a proactive bug bounty program what is the vendor's track record for timely vulnerability disclosure and patch delivery uh, for mega vendors uh, this is pretty much known but for small scale uh, companies or for small or medium scale companies as well as for startups uh, it is very important to ask these questions when you are doing market scan for security products uh, so that things are pretty much clear clear because uh, there are a lot of uh, niche companies who are uh, very good in terms of uh, the products the security products they have and they address a very specific area but at the same time it is very important to be cognizant of a fact that uh, uh, you look at uh, the track record of how quickly uh, the, the the important bugs are fixed because that's important otherwise uh, you are left uh, open to threats or risk if there is a bug and it is not addressed in the timely manner so this is from the procurement perspective because most of the time when we do risk assessment uh, we look at application we look at data we look at uh, uh, systems but we don't look at our procurement process so from the procurement perspective uh, these are the things means IT is going to look at it as well but this should be part of uh, procurement checklist as well now from the reactive perspective have new vulnerabilities been discovered and disclosed are there real world attacks on the vendors offerings how valuable is the process asset who is responsible for tracking vulnerabilities and risk okay for the digital ecosystem how much risk does a potential digital ecosystem partner represent what systems and information should they have access to now from the reactive perspective once connected and up and running has my partner security posture changed so 
you decided to have a and from the strategy perspective uh, and then once those things are implemented you get a different uh, picture uh, means there is a uh, there is a differential from what was part of a strategy and what is implemented and those differentials are not uh, pretty much visible because those are at a minute level at minor level it is not a major differential it is a minor differential so it is very important to spot those differential because sometimes when you implement or go ahead with the execution of the project uh, there are several deviations because of certain dependencies or several other reasons now you need to track those deviations in the implementation just to make sure that uh, how when you backtrack how it impacts overall security of your system I have seen this happening at several places for instance if you have like 200 windows systems that you need to patch and uh, due to some reason you patch this 90 systems part of change control pro you implemented the change control and then you did it it was done very well now rest of the five or ten systems which are not patched because it was not part of the core systems but still because those systems are linked to other business processes so it has to be done so you decided to do it later but that later again is two months six months seven months is not decided so again you are uh, opening um, uh, opening uh, doors for uh, attackers or hackers because that's what they look at uh, how 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 aware is your organization in terms of uh, making sure that all the uh, doors are strengthened enough uh, in order to make sure that uh, that uh, anyone can enter or people cannot enter i hope you are getting my point i guess uh, this is it uh, uh, as i mentioned uh, about situational awareness there are a couple of models uh, which are being used by different uh, AI companies in order to create uh, uh, softwares, uh, predictive analytics software to predict your threat uh, uh, to your processes and systems. So what I'm saying is uh, situational awareness is not an IT concept. It is more of a psychology concept, but uh, the process and the method is being used to design AI machine learning is being used in the machine learning in order to what data needs to be collected and how to analyze that situational awareness and then they create a threat response system uh, military and uh, other uh, places they have a similar kind of uh, uh, experts who because IT is the second or third layer means developing a system is a, is is a different story but coming up with a with a concept where you actually talk about the 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 real need from the psychological perspective and why it happens is more important so that is more of a cognitive process which are related to situational awareness and how it translates to uh, uh, to uh, threat detection and uh, threat response so like situational assessment ses sense making and then analysis so it's like tactical strategic and scientific uh, the aim is not to discuss about situational awareness but I would like uh, you guys those who are practicing security for a long time I know you have done different certifications but these things are very important to get a broader picture to come up with your own frameworks to come up with your own uh, uh, definitions and concepts and make it very custom specific to any organization because those are the fundamental uh, 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 those are the fundamentals uh, not from the technology perspective from the human behavior perspective okay so it's very important to understand uh, those mental models those theoretical models and how they thought about it what are the different levels and how each levels are mapped uh, uh, then to technology and process and technology in order to create these uh, uh, systems okay I guess uh, this is it if you have any questions please uh, write an email or drop a comment below uh, and you know it takes a lot of effort to create these videos so please subscribe and forward to others those who are interested in cyber security and zero trust architecture and uh, drop comments as well if there is a feedback 
don't hesitate provide feedback i'll try to work on those areas and make things better thank you very much have a great day